Only eight countries have ever won the FIFA World Cup, despite there having been 21 editions of the world's biggest football tournament. They are Uruguay, Italy, Germany, Brazil, England, Argentina, France, and Spain. That means that at this winter's upcoming World Cup in Qatar, of the 32 nations present, 25 of them will have the opportunity to win the World Cup for the very first time. And yet, as is almost always the case, the favourites are comprised almost exclusively of national teams that have already won it. Brazil are the favourites, the most successful team in the history of the World Cup, followed by France, Argentina, England, Spain and Germany, all in that order. You have to get down as far as the seventh favourites, the Netherlands, to find a non-World Cup winner, which, given that there are only seven countries at the World Cup who have actually won it, due to Italy failing to qualify, means that the most widely tipped winners who haven't won it before are only shorter odds than one previous winner, Uruguay in this case. It is a remarkable stronghold that just eight countries, out of about 200 have, over what is, after all, called the World Cup. Back in 1974, Pele predicted that an African nation would win the World Cup before the turn of the millennium. He was proven wrong, and an article from Bleacher Report declaring that he would be proven right before 2023, published in 2013, is now on equally shaky ground. Similar claims have been made about Asian nations, North American countries, and a whole raft of others. Yet, not a single one has come to fruition. So, in today's video, following a fair few requests, I decided to take a look at the countries that I feel are the most likely to become the first since Spain in 2010 to win their first World Cup. By what year that could become a realistic aim for them, and what the probable impediments to them achieving that goal might be. These are my seven. Seventh, Ukraine. Rest assured, I'm not handing Ukraine a token inclusion in seventh out of sympathy for the nation's current plight, but on sound footballing grounds alone. Ukraine is currently facing a fight for its very existence, or at least a battle to avoid serious fragmentation, but whilst the country's infrastructure is shelled and their future is threatened, Ukrainian football is flourishing. Ukraine has always produced great footballers. Even during the Soviet era, the likes of Oleg Blokin and Igor Belanov were among the USSR's star men, and the greatest post-Soviet player of all from the entire Soviet bloc is probably Andrei Shevchenko. It is worth noting that Ukraine has more Ballon d'Or winners than Russia, and indeed, more than all but eight countries on Earth, and the same number as Spain. Clearly, however, despite having had some outstanding individuals, as an independent nation, Ukraine has not yet had an outstanding team. The country's two best showings at major tournaments came in 2006, when they reached the World Cup quarterfinals, and in 2021, when they reached the quarterfinals of the Euros. This current Ukraine team does actually lack the star power of old, but it is a solid unit, packed full of domestic talent, plus a smattering of Premier League, La Liga, and Serie A stars. Clearly, once again, this current Ukraine team isn't going to win the World Cup anytime soon. They narrowly missed out on qualifying for the 2022 World Cup, beating Scotland but losing to Wales, and they are currently ranked 27th in the FIFA World Rankings. However, Ukraine won the most recent Under-20 World Cup in 2019, where they overcame the likes of Colombia, Italy, and the United States, and their young talent, from Ilya Zabani to Anatoly Trubin, is indicative of a very bright future lying ahead of them. In terms of the key fundamentals, Ukraine is in Europe and is a part of UEFA, which is a huge advantage in terms of their players competing at the highest level in the most prestigious club competitions. Shakhtar Donetsk recently went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Real Madrid, despite having been exiled from Donetsk, largely, since 2014, and from Ukraine entirely since the Russian invasion, with 10 Ukrainians in their starting 11, 8 of whom came through their own youth ranks, 
and only a 95th minute Antonio Rudiger equaliser could deny them of all three points. Not only that, Ukraine is the second largest country in Europe by area, and the eighth largest by population, meaning that if Ukraine can continue their outstanding recent youth development, whenever, hopefully, that is, sooner rather than later, peace returns to the country, the sky really is the limit. I can't see Ukraine winning any of the next three World Cups, for example, and I would consider them to be a long shot to win it in my lifetime, hence why they're only seventh. But there is every chance that they could reach the knockout stage as early as 2026 and go deep in 2030. Sixth, Mexico. Mexico are incredibly consistent at the FIFA World Cup, having reached the round of 16 stage, but been knocked out at the round of 16 stage at every single World Cup since 1994. That is, seven consecutive tournaments, and looking at their current squad and their World Cup group, you wouldn't bet against them making it eight in Qatar. Or I wouldn't at least. One of the great mysteries of international football, Mexico is an enormous football mad nation in the Americas. Two thirds of the size of Brazil and three times the size of Argentina in terms of population, whilst those two have reached 12 World Cup finals and have won seven of them, Mexico have never got beyond the quarter final stage. Even Uruguay, which doesn't even have 3% of Mexico's population, has won the World Cup twice. There are lots of theories as to why this is the case, from a dysfunctional league system to weak nationwide academy infrastructure, and a federation that is far more interested in raising cash by playing meaningless friendly games in the United States than they are in actually improving the national team's standard, but the fact remains that Mexico's potential is almost off the charts, and therefore they have to be contenders to become the next first-time World Cup winners. Mexico's under-17 team reached the final of the most recent under-17 World Cup in 2019, where they lost 2-1 to Brazil, but the country has also had false dawns in the past, with their youth teams impressing, but failing to transfer that success to the senior level. When you compare Mexico with other Latin American countries, unfavorably, as I have just done, it is worth noting of course that Mexico are members of CONCACAF rather than CONMEBOL, meaning that Mexico have historically struggled with a lack of competition and haven't routinely been tested against the might of an Argentina or Brazil. That is unlikely to change anytime soon, but the perceived threat that the rapidly improving Canadian and US national teams pose to Mexico might actually be a blessing in disguise. Whilst it might make it tougher to qualify for the World Cup in the short term, it takes tough steel to create the sharpest blade, or whatever the hell that phrase actually is, and that is what Mexico have got now. There are still far too many variables and signs that Mexico aren't yet on a direct path towards realizing their potential for them to finish higher than six, but their ceiling is so high, arguably higher than anyone else's in this seven, that they at least had to feature. Fifth, Egypt. Whilst there aren't the direct comparisons that you have with Mexico in the Americas, with the likes of Argentina and Brazil, the case for Egypt is very similar, at least in the sense that it is a massive country that is absolutely obsessed with football. Egypt is the third most populous country in Africa, but of course, no national team from Africa has even reached the semi-final stage of a World Cup, and none have reached the quarterfinals since Ghana in 2010. Egypt have only ever appeared at three World Cups, in 1934, 1990, and 2018, and they are yet to win a game at the finals, despite being the single most successful team in the history of the African Cup of Nations. Egypt's regional dominance has not yet translated onto the global stage, and even with the presence of one of the best players on the planet, in the form of national hero Mohamed Salah, Egypt failed to qualify for the upcoming World Cup, losing to Senegal on penalties in their final qualifier, just as they had done in the most recent AFCON final, only the previous month. The reason why Egypt, a country of more than 100 million people who currently live under the repressive authoritarian rule of Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, have failed to realize their footballing potential, just as is the case with Mexico, is multifaceted. 
there is one key similarity between them, which is that they both have football federations or associations that stand accused of being hideously corrupt and far more interested in raking in a quick buck than in actually progressing the country standing within the world of football. When Egypt qualified for their first World Cup in more than 30 years in 2018, they were reportedly the only country whose players flew economy, whilst their FA executives flew first class. And they based the team in Chechnya to provide photo ops for the local pound shop warlord and Putin puppet Ramzan Kadyrov, which meant that their team had to travel vast distances for every single one of their games. It was indicative of the broader mismanagement of Egyptian football, but nonetheless, Egypt's demography, passion for the sport, and the inspiration that the likes of Mohamed El Neni and Mohamed Salah have set with their success in Europe means that few countries come close when it comes to raw potential. I would be amazed if Egypt won the World Cup in the next couple of decades, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if they fail to even qualify for the next two or three World Cups. But given that it could be 20 to 30 years before any country that hasn't yet won the World Cup does win it, Egypt's long-term prospects are still enough to earn them a spot in fifth. Fourth, the Netherlands. No non-World Cup winning country has come closer to winning football's biggest prize than the Netherlands, who are the only national team to have reached three FIFA World Cup finals whilst failing to win a single one of them. Those three finals came in 1974, 1978, and 2010, and following defeat to Spain's golden team in the final in South Africa, the Netherlands finished third at the World Cup in Brazil in 2014, where they were only beaten on penalties by Argentina in the semi-finals. Failure to even qualify for the Euros in 2016 and the World Cup in 2018 could be seen as a sign of terminal decline but the Dutch will be back in action in Qatar, drawn alongside the hosts in Group A, which they are the favourites to win. The Netherlands doesn't have an enormous population, home to fewer than 20 million people, but the country's output is rivaled by few larger nations on Earth, and it shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. In Ajax, the Netherlands is home to arguably the finest academy in all of world football, and with the likes of Devon Wrench, Terrell Malassia, Matthias De Ligt, Cody Gakpo, Ryan Grafenbeck, and Frankie de Jong, all aged 25 or younger, this current crop should only improve as time goes on. Winning a World Cup would still be an almighty task for them, make no mistake about that, and I can't see it happening in 2022 or even 2026. But for a national team that has come within just two games or fewer of winning the World Cup on five separate occasions, which is more times than either Spain or England, clearly, you would have to put them among the favourites to become the next first-time World Cup winners. God knows, they have been waiting long enough. Third, Nigeria. Nigeria has the largest population of any African country, home to almost twice as many inhabitants as the second largest country, Ethiopia, and on course to overtake Brazil as the sixth most populous nation on earth before the end of 2022, their population has among the youngest median age anywhere in the world, and the country has an insatiable appetite for football. All of that should bode extremely well when it comes to Nigeria's footballing prospects, yet Nigeria are currently ranked 32nd in the FIFA World Rankings. They went out in the round of 16 of the 2021 African Cup of Nations, and they failed to even qualify for the upcoming World Cup in Qatar after they were knocked out by Ghana by virtue of away goals. Ghana isn't even a sixth of the size of Nigeria, meanwhile Senegal Africa's top-ranked national team isn't even a tenth of the size of Nigeria, and the likes of Cameroon and Ivory Coast have also produced a similar number of top-level players, despite being much, much smaller nations. So, just what is holding Nigeria back? Well, as with Mexico and Egypt, there are a few things, and as with both of those two, one of them is a very suspect football federation. The NFF, previously the NFA, have been labelled as one of the most corrupt governing bodies in all of world football, and there is some esteemed competition on that front, believe me. 
FIFA even briefly had to suspend Nigeria back in 2014 after the government issued a legal order for the sports ministry to appoint new federation leaders. Nigeria's academy and youth facilities lag behind even their neighbours, let alone more established football powerhouses. Nonetheless, the talent pool within the Nigerian diaspora is evident, with the likes of David Alaba, Fakayo Tamori, and Bakayo Saka all having Nigerian parents, meanwhile Tammy Abraham, Manuel Akanji, and Jamal Musaila were all eligible to represent Nigeria as well, but chose instead to represent the European nations in which they were raised. Former Super Eagle stars JJ Okocha and John Obi Mikel also came through the youth ranks at European clubs, illustrating that whilst the talent very clearly is there, it just isn't being nurtured or honed in the right way at home in Nigeria. Nigeria are the most successful national team at under-17 level, with five under-17 World Cup titles to their name, to Brazil's four, including recent successes in 2013 and 2015. The current Nigeria team does have some outstanding young players, such as Victor Osimhen and Samuel Chukwesi, but evidently, it is not an outstanding team. Nigeria will not win the World Cup, until it sorts out corruption within its governing body, insufficient academy and youth team facilities, and improves its domestic league, which currently ranks 12th in the Confederation of African Football's coefficient rankings, below Libya and Tanzania, and most likely not for another decade after that. But if they can do all of that, and admittedly, it is a very big if, then Nigeria undoubtedly has the potential to become one of the most formidable national teams on the planet. Second, the United States. Just as has been the case with the African continent as a whole, people have been predicting that the United States as a country would come good at football for decades. And time after time, their prophecies have been made to look rather foolish. Not only have the USMNT failed to win the World Cup, they haven't even been able to improve upon reaching the quarterfinal stage in 2002, and they failed to qualify for the 2018 World Cup in Russia, finishing behind the likes of Costa Rica, Panama, and Honduras in World Cup qualifying. For the first time though, whilst I won't predict a date by which the United States will win the Men's World Cup, I do think that there is genuine reason to believe that the country's football or soccer prospects are firmly on an upward trajectory. Not only is the national team much improved compared to five years ago, all of their best players are either in their teens or their early 20s. The likes of Giovanni Reina, Sergino Dest, Brendan Aronson, Tyler Adams, Eunice Musa, and Weston McKenney make this the best USA team in living memory, and most likely of all time, the oldest of whom is just 24 years old the same age as the US MNT's captain and starman Christian Pulisic. That bodes well, as does the gradual improvement of the MLS and, as I mentioned with Mexico, the improving standard of CONCACAF as a whole. I actually think that the rapid rise of Canada, who only narrowly missed out on featuring in this seven themselves, could have more significance for US soccer than almost anyone realises since that becoming a proper rivalry and spectacle, played at a really high level, could work wonders for the growth of the sport. The biggest hurdle for American soccer, aside from the obvious fact that the sport faces much steeper competition for popularity than football does almost anywhere else in the world from other sports like baseball and American football, is the problem relating to youth development. Getting a proper football education for the vast majority of Americans still remains prohibitively expensive and an almost exclusively middle-class pursuit, as I covered in a video entitled The Problem with US Youth Development, which I would arrogantly state is well worth watching. Until that is fixed, I don't think that the USMNT will win the World Cup but I wouldn't rule them out reaching the knockout stage in 2022 and going deep in 2026 despite that fatal flaw. And that illustrates their quite frightening potential if they did actually start to get their youth development right. Honourable mentions. Just before we come to top spot, I spent an unjustified amount of time on this seven, 
In terms of drawing up my possible candidates and then creating a needlessly complex set of criteria to determine my top seven, which means that I'm not just going to throw away all of that hard work, and I will share with you those nations that earned a nomination, but just narrowly missed out on my final seven. Belgium, are perhaps the most notable omissions, currently ranks second in the FIFA World Rankings, behind Brazil, and having been the top-ranked national team for more than three years before Brazil overtook them. Clearly, Belgium are very good. Their youth development is absolutely outstanding, and for a nation of fewer than 12 million people, the talent that they have produced is out of this world. Whilst that conveyor belt is still in full swing, the genuinely world-class Belgian players, most notably Kevin De Bruyne and Eden Hazard, are both 31 years old now. Meanwhile, Thibaut Courtois and Romelu Lukaku are 29 and 30, Jan Vertonghen and Toby Alderweireld are 33 and 35, and I could go on. The point that I'm trying to get at is that if Belgium were going to win the World Cup, I think 2018 was their golden opportunity. And even if they continue to punch above their weight, I think they'll find it really tough to do it in the foreseeable future. Nonetheless, they are still one of the best national teams on the planet right now, and therefore, they are unfortunate not to feature. It is a similar story with the likes of Croatia and Denmark, who have tiny populations, but very respectable teams but I just find it hard to see them pushing on and actually winning the World Cup from now, despite Croatia having been finalists in 2018, of course. You could make similar arguments for Algeria and particularly Turkey as those that were made for Nigeria, Egypt, and Mexico in terms of their size and love of the game, albeit Algeria isn't as populous as those three. Turkey, on the other hand, is the second most populous country in UEFA, with more inhabitants than Germany, France, and England, but if anything, the national team and domestic league is actually severely weakening right now. I have made an entire video about why that is the case, in terms of the mismanagement of Turkish football and broader political and economic headwinds, but it is because of those facts, Turkey lost to the Faroe Islands and drew with Luxembourg in their two most recent internationals, might I add, that ensures that, despite their undoubted potential, they couldn't make my seven. Canada, Cameroon, and Ivory Coast all also made my shortlist, but not my final seven. Meanwhile, I very nearly included Greenland, who don't currently have a national team that is even recognized by CONCACAF or UEFA, let alone FIFA, who I have also made a video about. I have made lots of videos, haven't I? on the grounds that should all of the obvious candidates who feature in this seven fail to win the World Cup for the next 50 plus years, shall we say, as the planet continues to heat up, rendering vast swathes of the globe uninhabitable, Greenland, which is currently only habitable along tiny pockets of its coastline, could actually become habitable and see its population increase quite dramatically. Look, it is a long shot, and by that stage football is probably going to be the least of any of our concerns, and ultimately, I left them out not only because of the convoluted and by no means entirely sound logic that brought me to them potentially becoming future first-time World Cup winners, but also because any time I even mention climate change on this channel, I get about three people in the comments, the same three people I think, shouting about how climate change is a hoax, I have drunk Bill Gates' Kool-Aid, and how I will deserve it when the World Economic Forum decides to harvest my organs. So, you know, I decided against it. Oh well, I suppose I have actually mentioned it now. Come at me, Alistair, and Citizen Smith. Alrighty then, let's see who my mad criteria resulted in taking top spot. First, Portugal. Yes, there is nothing particularly complex about the national team that takes top spot, and that is Portugal. A country of just 10 million people, which is fewer than Burundi and the Dominican Republic, Portugal is less than a fifth of the size of their neighbours Spain, and they have never reached a World Cup final. So, why oh why, you might ask, do they take top spot? Well, simply put, Portugal have an outstanding team. By far the best, in my view at least, of any non-World Cup winning nation right now. Their talent pool, even down to the third best player in most positions, is excellent, 
and both the depth and the average age of their squad suggest that Portugal ought to be a formidable force for many years to come. Cristiano Ronaldo is of course Portugal's most famous gift to the world of football, a man who has now scored a record-breaking 117 goals from 191 caps for the national team, age 37, and Portugal won the Euros in 2016 under the stewardship of Fernando Santos. Nonetheless, perhaps somewhat controversially, I am now of the opinion that both Ronaldo and Santos are holding Portugal back in terms of getting the best out of their outstanding young players, and I don't think that they will win the World Cup or even reach the last four whilst they are both still around, which most likely just means Qatar in 2022. When you reel off names like Ruben Diaz, Nuno Mendes, Joao Cancelo, Bruno Fernandes, Bernardo Silva, Ruben Neves, Vitinha, Renato Sanchez, Rafael Lejao, Diogo Jota, and Joao Felix, among a great many others, I think it is pretty evident that Portugal have one of the strongest squads in international football, and it is only because of an outdated manager and a fixation on playing solely to Ronaldo's strengths rather than the team as a whole, including some really intricate and quick forward players that is holding them back. Throw in youngsters like Francisco Conceição, Gonzalo Inacio, and Fabio Carvalho, and I think this Portugal team is by far the best equipped from 2026 onwards out of all of the non-World Cup winning national teams to have a really good crack at winning the biggest prize in all of world football. So that is it for today's video. I just want to clarify that when I say FIFA World Cup, I am referring to the Men's World Cup, and I say Women's World Cup to refer to the Women's World Cup. It seems more straightforward than saying men's every time that I mean the Men's World Cup, but I just wanted to clarify that point. Thank you all very much as ever for watching. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Hit the like button if that was the case. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and make sure that you're subscribed. Of course it goes without saying. And <coughs> bloody hell, almost died. And also have notifications turned on for HITC Sevens. You can also find me on Twitter and on Instagram via the username at HITC Sevens on both should you wish to do so. Cheers and have a great day.